Today's message is titled, Our Unchanging God. We are living in a fast-changing world. You know, within last decade, Tacoma and Pierce County has gone through so much development. New road, new housing development, so many cars. I remember 18 years ago when we, our family first came to, you know, the Tacoma Central, we were, you know, living in Prealop, and 512 was just, just wide open. <laughs> With highway just wide open. It's like, wow, it's easy to commute. But now, during rush hour, it's like clogged. We are living in a fast-changing world. You know, just 20 years ago. Phone was something that you used to have a conversation with person on the other side. But today, when we think about the smartphone, this conversation is minor thing. You take pictures. You take pictures of your grandkids. Um, you search internet to find the restaurant. You actually put the address and it becomes your navigation system. <laughs> you can um, buy airplane tickets. Actually, airplane tickets, they don't print out on paper. You actually download a QR code airplane ticket on your phone and you show up at the airport with your phone. And not only that, you don't go to a bank to deposit checks. You just take a picture and your checks get deposited. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, Samsung, they showed off their telephone that can translate simultaneous translation right on the spot, whether you speak Spanish or Japanese or Chinese, the phone can be a translator for you. So you're not going to need Pastor Samuel translating the messages from Korean to English or English to Korean anymore. Just have the Samsung telephone. <laughs> it will translate for you. When you travel now overseas, whether you go to Mexico, whether you go to Spain, all you need is your phone. It will translate for you. Wow. But the fact that the world is so fast changing, you know, this development, a lot of times it also brings stress. I remember visiting Korea and these McDonald's and Burger Kings in Korea. It's like all the kiosk is up there, so you order on the kiosk, but Elderly folks, they, they don't know how to use this screen ordering system. And they are hesitating. Some young people, nice people, Grandpa, let me help you. What would you like to? And, and they do all these things for you. But, you know, some of the older folks, they are not used to ordering. They need somebody whom you can talk to. Like, how much is it? <laughs> let me give you money and receive the change. Changes, unfamiliar things bring stress. So Alvin Toffolo said, in this fast-changing world, because people feel the stress, they are looking for something that are familiar, that they, they find sense of stability, sense of stability and security. Because everything is changing. People look for something that doesn't change, that that are familiar, that they feel safe. So we can ask a question. What things doesn't change in this world? Is there things that doesn't change in this world? Is there some things that I can always depend on that doesn't change? The scripture has an answer. The scripture we read, it says, every good and perfect gift comes down from Father of lights, from heaven above. Who does not change? Would you repeat after me? God does not change. Starting from February, I've been sharing message on, you know, who is God? What kind of God is he? Getting to know God. The first message was about the all-knowing God, what God knows about us. God who knows everything about us. Second message was God with whom nothing was impossible, the all-powerful God. And then we also shared message about God who is omnipresent, 
God who is everywhere, wherever God's people go. God who is always with us, the omnipresent. So the omniscient God who knows everything and the omnipotent, all-powerful God and the omnipresent God. Today, we are studying about God's immutability, God who doesn't change. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, God says, I, Jehovah, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, you are not destroyed. God says, I do not change. And because God doesn't change, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because he is perfect. He doesn't need to be improved or he doesn't get worse. He is perfect, so he doesn't change. But we change because we are not perfect. So everything in the universe except God, everything in the universe changes. You know you are changing. Just look at the mirror. <laughs> my hair gets thinner. You know, or, around my belly, you know, around my waist. I'm putting on weight. But not only our outward appearance, but our thoughts, like there's a memory lapse. Uh, my words, I stutter now. <laughs> words don't come out like, oh, what's the word, what's the word? <laughs> and my behavior, I get slower. But God doesn't change. So there are so many things that change all around us that cause stress. And we want to look for something that doesn't change and it says, God is the one who doesn't change. So I want to share with you two things about God, who is the unchanging God that can become the solid foundation for sense of security for our lives. Number one, God's love for me never changes. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. God's love for me never changes. Look at the person next to you with a smile. Tell them, God's love for you never changes. We need to remind ourselves often. We need to remind each other often of this fact. God's love for me never changes. Jeremiah 31 verse 3, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. What kind of love? Everlasting love. God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. You were born to be loved. You know, in Korean, like about 10 years ago, this, this gospel song came out and everybody starts singing this song, even in birthday parties. It says, 당신은 사랑받기 위해 태어난 사람. You were born to be loved. That's a powerful declaration of gospel truth. You were born to be loved. Repeat after me. I am born to be loved. Look at the person next to you. You are born to be loved. God made you. God created you so that you can receive all his love. Tacoma Central Presbyterian. This is a community where all of us receive God's love and we channel this love. We, we share this love with each other in our family and in our community. This is Channel of God's love. Hallelujah. We receive his everlasting love and we share because there's enough of this love that, that can go around. Hallelujah. God's love will never run dry. Hallelujah. So he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. You know, we get disappointed. We get hurt in interpersonal relationships because people change. You know, people have, have mood swings. You know, one day they are good and nice. Next day they are irritable. <laughs> you know, newlywed couples sometimes get into an argument. They said, are you the person to whom I married? <laughs> How can you change overnight? I thought you were a nice guy. I married you. What happened to you? <laughs> You're not the same person I married. <laughs> people change. You know, a mother who has a rebellious teenager, 
in exasperation. She said, my sweet baby has become this rebellious teenager. What happened? I don't recognize him no more. He was a sweet baby. What happened? People change. And then people become unpredictable, inconsistent, which causes stress in our lives. But God remains the same. Most of all, God's love for you and for me never changes. So do not doubt God's love for you. No matter what happens to you, no matter what you're going through, God's love for me never changes. And that's why today's call to worship in Romans chapter 8, Apostle Paul says, I am convinced neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, nor height nor death, nothing in all creation, today, future, nothing can ever separate us from God's love that is given to us in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. So no matter what is happening, no matter what unexpected accident happens, no matter what kind of setbacks that you experience, please remember, God's love doesn't change. That means, despite my failure, despite my uh, setback, disappointment, I can get up. I can try anew because God's love for me never changes. Trusting in his love, unchanging love and grace. Despite all my failure of the past, I can have a new beginning today. Hallelujah. You know, people say things like, now I'm going to uh, clean up my garage one day when um, <laughs> I have enough time. Like one day when, uh, when I'm going to lose weight one day when. <laughs> but I am here to say, when we trust in God's unchanging love, one day when can become one day win. Today, I can begin anew. I can take a new step of faith because God's love for me doesn't change. So no matter what defeat, no matter what failure, no matter what kind of hardship that I'm experiencing, today, trusting in God's love for me, trusting in God's grace for me, I am going to get up, Take a new step. Hallelujah. God's love for me never changes. We get in trouble whenever we doubt God's love. So let's never forget God's love for me never changes. Hallelujah. Second thing that doesn't change about God is God's word never changes. Repeat after me. God's word never changes. That means his promises for you and your family, his promises for us and this, this faith community, his promises for us doesn't change either. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of God, our God remains forever. Hallelujah. The grass wither, the flowers fall, but God's word doesn't change. It will remain forever. Mm. So God's word is always fresh. It has always life-giving power. So God's word is always timely. God's word is always powerful. God's word, uh, word is, God's promise is always effective and valid. Hallelujah. People's word what people have spoken, what people have written can change and as time goes by, it becomes useless. As the world around us develops, especially the development in science and technology, there are many things <clears throat> that becomes useless. You know, literature, like poem and things like that, it, it can have more lasting you know, value as it touched people's soul. But think about science textbooks. This college professor can write science textbook, goes through the editor, they do all the editing and typesetting. By the time it gets to be printed, some things in that textbook will be outdated. When I was in college, my 
I studied computer science. What I studied, how many years ago, <laughs> doesn't work anymore. In the field of computer science, any textbook over five years old is already old news. It's useless because the world is changing so much. What people have written can change. What does that tell us? Rather than following things that will change the patterns of the world, what is in vogue, what is in fashion today, we can't afford to spend our lives chasing the temporal things and keep up with the Jones. But we need to, we need to build our life following what remains forever, the word of God. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but word of Christ will remain forever so that we want to hold on to the word of God. So we want to follow the word of Jesus Christ. You know, there is no other book in human history that was persecuted, that was hated as much as the Bible. So many kings, so many rulers, so many dictators, so many despots. They wanted to persecute this book. They banned the book. They burned this book. But all those dictators and kings and tyrants, they have all gone away in history. But word of God, the Bible still stands. Why? Because it contains the word of God. It contains the promise of Jesus Christ for us, which doesn't change. Hallelujah. You know, in it we find God's eternal word, the laws and principles he set in motion in this world that will never change. You know, the first American astronaut, Alan Shepard, before he got on the spacecraft, one of the uh, reporters asked him, Mr. Shepard, you are about to become the first American astronaut. So at this moment, as you are about to step into this spacecraft, what do you trust the most? They were expecting him to say something like, you know, all the engineers in NASA, they have, you know, built this thing and they have went through all the experiment. So I trust this, you know, aircraft's going to carry me. What it, but you know what he said? I trust that God's laws doesn't change. Why did he say that? He knew something. Think about it. If the rate of earth rotation were inconsistent, if it changes day after day, you cannot fire up a space aircraft. Alan Shepard will not return <laughs> If the earthly gravity changes day after day, you cannot fly aircraft, much less space shuttles. But gravity doesn't change. Earth rate of rotation doesn't change. When God created heavens and the earth, he set certain laws in the world that doesn't change. So when people discover there are certain rules that don't change, from these rules, they can continue to build up their knowledge and, and apply into different fields. At first, it was physics and chemistry and mathematics, which became medicine, which became astrophysics and nuclear science. It becomes electromagnetic. All the technology and science development was possible because this universe, there was a one set of law that doesn't change. Water will always flow from high to low places. And, and, and that's what people discovered. Heavy things, and because of gravity, it will fall. Oh, so carpenters and engineers can build buildings and bridges and they can see, oh, water will always flow from high to low places. It, it gave us the knowledge and development of all the things that now benefit human life. 
So here in this physical universe, there are physical laws that God has set in much the same way. God has given moral and spiritual laws that no one can ignore. For example, no one can ignore the law of gravity. Somebody says, I don't know what gravity is. I don't believe in gravity. Whether you believe in gravity or not, <laughs> if you drop a, a glass, a glass cup, it will shatter because of gravity. You could say, I don't believe in gravity. And if you jump out of third floor window, you will break your leg. <laughs> or, or even worse, you don't have to believe in gravity, but gravity is operating everywhere. No one can ignore. In much the same way, there are spiritual and moral laws that God has given. And whenever people ignore and violate God's law and principles, it will bring pain and harm upon personal lives and our family and our society. Now we know there are certain laws that our society and the government put in place is because these things protect people from harm, harming themselves or their family or their neighbor. So we know there are certain things that are forbidden by the law of the land. Whatever the law of the land, whatever the government enshrined in the law, they are also forbidden in God's word. But there are some things God forbid. There are some things God says that are sin. But just because the law of the society, because the government's law does not call that a crime, some people think they can do. It's permissible. Or they can ignore this God-ordained law and rule. Some say, there is no God. You can't see God. Believing God is superstition. It's mythology. You can't believe in God. I don't believe in God. God has given us the law. That's superstition. We just live with science only. But they, they are forgetting the fact that whenever individual or family or society ignore God's law, there will be consequences, painful consequences. Because God is the creator of the whole universe. Whole universe operate following God-ordained rules. God's law, God's word is eternal. Because he's perfect God, he doesn't change. His word doesn't change. His law doesn't need adjustment and change. It's perfect. It's set always. Which means what God has said once, are right and wrong. It doesn't change according to the flow of time. People's opinion, the opinion of the society doesn't change the moral standard that God has set already. We are people who need to submit to God's way of truth, right and wrong. We can't follow the changing opinion of the world around us but here it is the difficulty. Satan comes to tempt us. Satan wants to suggest that we can doubt God's word, that we can ignore God's word, and it will be okay. Think about what the devil, what Satan said to Adam and Eve. Did God really say, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden. Look at how Satan twists God's word. God says, you can eat from every tree except this one. Just one. But devil is throwing a question. Did God really say you must not eat from all the trees? God says you can eat more except one. But there are two ways this, this question is coming. Did God really say? Doubting God's word. Not eat from any of the trees. No, he said you can eat from every except one. But by asking the question, 
not eat from any other tree. No, 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 no. You are trying to cause doubt about God's character, that God is not good and loving God. Somehow God is hoarding all the good things and not sharing with us. No, that's not who God is. But devil wants to cause seed. He wants to sow the seed of doubt about God's character and God's word. And even today, Satan tempt people the same way. Plant a doubt about God's word and God's character. Did God really say? So here in 21st century in postmodern world, Satan's lie comes like this. Oh, those things God says is sin. God forbid. Oh, that's your opinion. That's your truth, but my truth is different. It is what you believe, but I believe differently. How can you call that marriage? God says marriage is Adam and Eve, one man and one woman. And that is sin. That's bigotry. Time has changed. We need to think about people who have different orientation, different preferences. And if you are Christian, and if your Christian religion teach love, you need to tolerate. You need to accept people who are different than you. So even those people who are attracted of the same sexes, hey, love is the same love. Is that truth? Some people want to twist God's word. Some people want to ignore God's law. They think they can put the opinion of people, the changing opinion of the culture above God's eternal law. And people think it will be okay. That society will be okay. That our family will be okay. Our children will be okay. But we already see the consequence of this kind of rejection of God's law. So much confusion. So much broken heart and broken family and broken lives. God's word is clear. Sexuality is supposed to be expressed within the safe boundary of marriage. But the popular opinion of today's culture, people say, you know, before you get married, you should live together for a while to find out whether you are really compatible or not. And then if you are compatible, then get married. That's wise. Is that really wise? That's not the way God has given us the rule. Sex is to be expressed within the safe boundary of marriage, but popular culture says wisdom dictates that you try it out before you go into commitment. Is that really wisdom? You know, some of the scientific study in social science, what they have found is that people who tried it out before marriage, there is greater likelihood of domestic violence among people who are not married but people who are cohabitating together. There is greater likelihood of domestic violence and that eventually they will break up, the relationship will not work out. This greater likelihood of breakup as well as domestic violence is 300% more in people who go to bed and cohabitate. Then people who follow God's law that says, we will keep ourselves pure until we stand before God and make the wedding marriage vow. So without hesitation, we can teach our children and grandchildren, follow God's way. It will be better for you. Observe the Sabbath and keep it holy rather than work, work, work and trying to think that I will work and earn my paycheck and provide for myself. Trust that it is God who provides for all of our need. Set aside the day of Sabbath, the day of trusting in God and resting and worship. No other interpretation needed. Follow God's law. Follow God's principles. 
it will be better off for you. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Jesus says there are two ways of building a house, upon the rock or upon the sand. The problem of building a house that's not upon the rock but upon the sand is that in our life, there will come a storm after heavy rain when the flood waters come. Any house that was not built upon the rock will be swept away. So when crisis come in our, our lives, any life that is not built upon the rock, solid rock, which is the word of Jesus Christ, when we do not build our life and our family upon God's word and God's principles, in times of crisis, there will be great difficulty, great destruction, great pain. So Jesus says, build your life, build your family upon my word. Obey, follow that it will be well with you. So let me wrap up. Would you repeat after me? God's love never changes. God's love for you, God's love for me never changes. Number two, his word never changes. His word and his promises for us never changes. And because of his word never changes and we want to build our life upon his word, we want to read and we want to hold on to the word of God so that we can build our life on his word. So not only we read, we want to memorize and treasure God's word upon our heart. Do you remember after 40 days of fasting and prayer, the devil came to tempt Jesus. If you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. How did Jesus respond? Men shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. And he says, as it is written, you shall not tempt your God. As it is written, Jesus is quoting scripture. Jesus memorized certain scripture. And when the devil came to give him temptation, Jesus used the word that he has memorized the word that he had treasured, hidden in his heart. Jesus Christ was demonstrating for us how we can also overcome all temptation and difficulty. Let us hold on to God's word. Let us treasure God's word, memorizing God's word in our heart so that when the time that we need these words, Holy Spirit can remind us, this is the word, hold on to it. This is the word that you can use to, to gain strength to overcome this temptation, this hardship, this challenge. Let me wrap up. The world is changing, but God is unchanging, eternally the same God whose love for you and for me never changes. So because of his love for you and me doesn't change, no matter what we face and no matter what situation we come across, we can get up again. We can receive strength and help from him. Number two, his word doesn't change. So we want to build our life and our family upon his word. Lord, I want to obey your word. I want to treasure your word in my heart so that in times of need, and difficulty. Your word will give me strength and wisdom so that by your word I can overcome all hardship and difficulty. With your word I can resist the temptation. With your word I can be given wisdom and guidance. Hallelujah.